Hello everyone and welcome back to Movie Tales, the first one of 2024. And I wanted to talk about a movie I was genuinely interested in talking about. Before this, we did New Year's Eve, which was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. It made me really upset. So I wanted to watch something I hadn't seen before. I was kind of going through the John Cassavetti movies, just seeing like, okay, do I want to talk about Woman Under the Influence or maybe Husband, something like that. I decided we would hit a couple of firsts for this channel instead and talk about a couple of creators I'm interested in and I like. So we went with Mikey and Nikki. This is John Cassavetes starring Peter Fox starring and directed and written by Elaine May. All these people are very influential, big creators in the 60s and 70s that you are probably aware of even if you haven't seen any of their stuff. I'm sure you are familiar with all of their names and if you're not... One of them's Columbo, the other one is one of the comedy duos of May and Nichols, and John Cassavetti is one of the funniest guys out there and one of the most talented guys out there. Well, in 1976, they made this little movie, which I know they filmed a couple years before because Elaine May is crazy when it comes to editing and she takes a long time to make a movie. They filmed it in like, what, 73, 74 probably, and it came out a couple years later? Either way, Mikey and Nikki is a movie I hadn't seen from any of these people before, I like all of them. I think they're all talented and cool. I'm a fan of the Elaine May movies. I've been going through a rewatch of them recently anyways. And going through Cassavetes, I was just like, it's the perfect time to talk about them. This movie freaking rocks. I love this movie so much. It is just solely of the 70s. Just solely of like, get a camera, get on a street, film a couple of guys just walking about. But also they have an intensity and an energy to them you don't see anymore like we don't we couldn't do this movie today and I, I know that's such a stupid thing to say it's just because like we wouldn't film it like this we wouldn't make it like this we wouldn't find two leading men of this caliber that just look like dudes hanging out who know each other it's really insane so this movie is about Nikki and Mikey Mikey is played by Peter Falk and he gets a call from his friend Nikki one day and Nikki's like dude I'm gonna be killed I'm scared so Mikey comes over to his place, and this is where we kind of learn that they, they're like low-level, low-level mobster, gangster types. They work for some shady men, and they're also like really old friends who have known each other for years. So they've known each other like before they got involved in this stuff, and that's what we're doing. We're watching two grown men who have known each other for decades just chill in Philadelphia and have fun with each other. It's really interesting. And it's not a movie I don't, I think everyone's going to care about, but what it's doing here is really relatable. You know, you have Cassavetes who is playing this neurotic guy who is afraid everyone is out to get him. He's scared to leave his house. He's scared to get off a bus. He's scared to go into a building. He's scared to exist. And his friend Mikey the entire time is trying to tell him like, dude, like I don't, maybe someone's out to get you. I don't know, but panicking like this isn't going to help anybody. And it's great. It's so intense. This entire movie just feels like two old friends hanging out in a time when you're just like angry to be around that person. And look, I'm sure a lot of people know that feeling. I know that feeling. I know people where I'm the Mikey coming to help my neurotic friend doing this thing. I know people where I'm the Nikki, where I'm the one overreacting and overthinking and someone's trying to tell me to relax. I get both of those situations well. And when you have two actors of this caliber who are so interesting to watch, it is amazing. John Cassavetes, he is so specific in this style he does, where you have this guy who's very confident, very sure of himself, but likes to delve into the darkness, likes to just present as kind of like out of it a bit, somebody who is never fully together, never fully happy. And this type of role is perfect for him. He gets to act crazy. He gets to like jump off of Falk all the time, just run about like a weirdo. And he's really good at that. And he, he has like that coy, sly laugh at every moment, like a guy who thinks he has it together, think he's a cut above the rest, but he's not. And he's scared at every turn. And it's a beautiful, beautiful performance. I love that so much. And Peter Falk, fantastic. Like, he just shows up and commands a sequence. And it's just playing like, oh, hey, what are we doing here, man? We're supposed to go to the movies. Supposed to go to your house. Like, what? Why are we pretending all of this? What are, what are we really getting at here? And the third kind of lead in this movie is played by Ned Beatty. 
and he's the killer hired to kill Nikki. And his his stuff is fantastic because you're just watching Ned Beatty just be like, oh, this should have been easy. Like, this guy, it's not hard to kill him, right? Like, he's just a guy, but I can't find where to park. They're always in public. And if I spend more money than I make, then what was the point of this anyways? Just like, I'm tired. This is boring. It sucks. Perfect. Like, that's perfect energy. And then the rest of this runtime is just Mikey and Nikki going around doing stuff. It starts going to this hotel that Nikki is staying at. Then we get him out of there in like some panic states. We go to a bar. We hang out there. We get on a bus. We're going to go to the movies, but we go to a graveyard. The graveyard sequence is really cool because it's just watching these guys that have known each other forever just be like, sometimes I forget that we've been through everything we've been through as a team. Like we have our ups and downs, but we know each other better than we know most people. And that is a whole other thing to get into that is just terrifying. And I've had these conversations. I am certain a lot of you have had late night conversations with your friend who's a little more extra than you expect. And you're just like, I've been with you through thick and thin and through every single thing you've done. And now you're telling me you're going to die. This is insane. We've had those types of conversations. I know you have. It's crazy just how authentically these two guys pull it off. And they're playing... I think they're supposed to be like in their 40s. They're they're actors in their 40s too at this time. And that just makes it a little more realistic. Where I'm still a young guy and knowing people I've known for like 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, I can have these types of conversations. But you add another 20 years onto that, there's just an extra layer of just so much intensity to it. How far are we willing to go in certain things? How can we feel in certain things? And that's crazy. And they're both family men at the same time, but they go about family in different ways. Like, Mikey is happily married. The stuff of him at the end with his wife I find very interesting, where kind of like, throughout the entire movie, all of the men that Mikey interacts with, both being Nikki and the people he works for, they kind of view him as just like, oh, he repeats himself, he's not the brightest guy. He he wants to be seen as something more than the world sees him, and he asks his wife about that, and she starts to actually listen to him and try to understand him, which is really cool. You know, he's got a kid. He's really trying. He's trying his best. And and that's what you like to see from this type of guy. And Falk, I I can't sing his praises enough. Just an absolute dreamboat. Just a cool guy. I love it. It's so interesting. And they, so they go to the graveyard. They get out of there eventually. They're going to go to Nikki's mistress's place. And that's kind of a scene that's not really great. It's He's kind of just like, let me flirt with this girl, get off with her while Mikey's sitting in the other room. I'm sure another experience a lot of people are familiar with is just watching your friend do something disruptive and chaotic and do it right in front of you and then expect you to be okay with things and be like, hey, you want to pass with this, buddy? And that... That sequence is the weirdest one, and it's the one where I'm like, oh, I don't think you need this. But it just kind of goes into that thing where it's just every single man, including Nikki, making fun of Mikey. Like, even this girl who's supposedly easy, you can't get with because she doesn't want you. And because you're a married man, you can't do those types of things. And just every moment where it's just these two guys, whether they're on a bus just who gives a shit about the rest of the world? They're walking in a graveyard. They're walking down the street yelling at each other. There's just so much emotion in it, so much goodness in it. I love a movie of just people talking. I love people talking and experiencing stuff and two old friends like this just ruining each other's day, just trying to figure it out. It's really intense. Their sequences together end in blows where it's just kind of like, you've never been a good friend to me and I've been everything for you. I have literally came here to help you, but what's the point of any of this? We also realize that Mikey knows there's a hit out on Nikki and he, he's going to stop trying to help him. He's going to stop trying to help him. And that is crazy, you know, and this entire time we're doing a lot of like guerrilla filmmaking. We're walking on locations. Everything's kind of filming at night because it takes over a night. A lot of darkness, a lot of blacks. You can watch a specific rip of this movie on YouTube and I'm not going to say it's the best quality. I use some of it for the video you're going to see on here. I'd like a good remaster of it. If we could get one, that'd be really nice to see because I think these blacks, they look so good. We don't do blacks like this now, you know, like 50 years ago, we're making these colors pop differently. 
But the movie ends in some really intense sequences where Mikey just talks to his wife about what he wants. And the la- the literal last moments of this movie are Nikki banging on the door of their house, trying to get inside because he doesn't want to die. And he wants to apologize to his friend. And then he's killed by Ned Beatty. Just killed. He is straight up killed. We don't react to it. We don't cut to anything else. He's dead. Roll credits. It's truly crazy. Like, it's insane. That's what we do. Because we would not do that today. But this movie's just about, is he going to die? Is he going to live? And he just dies in the end and we move on. And it's crazy. And I I mean, if you want to see an actor showcase, that's what this is. It's Cassavetes and Falk just giving you intense work on every conceivable level. You have two guys just playing off each other. They know each other in real life. They're gentlemen. They're intense. They're gruff. They can joke with each other. They can talk shit about each other. Just watching these guys in big coats just laugh and cry and scream this is you and your best friend like i have people in my life that i relate to each character with this too and i'm like i i know this world i know how this would go that's pretty crazy to see and this movie's pretty amazing in that way i truly love it i i love it it's a really good performance from both those guys it's one of elaine's best films and she's made all hits in my opinion i think we should talk more about her movies because they're pretty sick and we'll probably talk more Cassavetes and Falk eventually. These guys kind of rock. I love everything about this. Mikey and Nikki surprised me so much. And again, if you're not like a fan of just like the 70s streets where people get into cars, they drink beer and smoke in every sequence, and just talk about what like what life was and what they could have and all the times they messed up and why people hate them, you might not like it. But if that's your thing, This is one of the best movies to do it. And it might just be forgotten to a lot of younger audiences, but I'm telling you, it's pretty sick. It's pretty slick, too. It's awesome. So that is going to do it for this episode of Movie Tales. No, thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you could check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.